In mid-December 2020, I set off with my friends Fernando Carvalho, Heriberto Jimenez Jr., and Ricardo Rec to search for one of my favorite fish, Ifesser Bryken Herbert Axel Rodai, the black neon tetra, in the countryside of the north of Mato Grosso do Sul state, Brazil. Rainstorms chased us across the Cerrado landscape west of the city of Cuxim. Meanwhile, Heriberto navigated the potholes and swathes of thick red mud which populated the dirt road. Our destination was a forest stream which swept beneath a simple wooden bridge. The jungle crowded down to the banks on each side, casting shadows over the water, which was the colour of tea, stained with tannins and thick with sediment due to the rains. I set up my camera and slipped into the stream. Every movement stirred up clouds of sand, silt, leaves and detritus, and visibility was only about 30 to 60 centimetres. Small tetras darted past in the gloom. Munchausia dicrora, Munchausia forestae, and Munchausia oligolepis raced by me. Jupiaba cantogasta and Sehapinus joined them in hurried, bouncing shoals. Where light did penetrate, stands of the macrophyte Eleocharis minima clung to the submerged dunes of sand, or the shallows near the bank. Flitting across the sand, small groups of data caracins, Caracidium AFF zebra, kept their distance from me, watching with their chameleon-like roving eyes. Heriberto swam gently alongside me. We kept abreast so as not to leave one person with a face full of silt and murk caused by the movements of the other. In the centre of the stream, the substrate was mostly open sand, peppered with pea gravel and scattered patches of leaf litter. Here and there, small stands of Ludwigia inclinata swayed in the current. In high light, this species turns a rich red, but here in the shade of the forest, it remained a pale green. On my right, the bank sloped up gently into a tangle of fallen branches, roots and piles of leaf litter. Everything was covered in a layer of silt and biofilm. Tetras zipped between the complex structural habitat provided by the surrounding forest. I spotted a single Corridorus areo perched on the sand, and nearby, a trio of juvenile Satanoperca papaterha hurried off into cover. Heriberto called me from the other side of the stream. Tai, neon negro. There, the bank rose steeply, decorated with a matrix of roots from the trees and plants above. I swam over, just in time to see a gaggle of gold lines dance off into the gloom. I followed. There they were, the black neon tetras darting about in a small hollow in the bank. I had seen them in 2018 with Heriberto in another habitat on another expedition, but had not observed them so closely or for such a time as I did on this day. My 33rd birthday. What a gift that was. As I looked on, a male Epistogramma trifasciata, bedecked in his electric blue livery, crept into my view, foraging along the bank. The black neons were joined by a single Caracidium laterale, which, unlike most Caracidium, hovers in mid-water rather than sitting on the substrate. The neons left the hollow and scattered along the bank. I followed as best I could, 
moving calmly so as not to scare them off. However, they simply faded into the gloom. I swam back to the right-hand bank and watched a young pint cichlid, Crenicicla lepidota, foraging among the leaf litter. Upstream, a rainstorm had broken, and the water became even more turbid. Shoals of Jupiaba cantogaster and Munchausi di Crora raced through the roots and sunken branches, dancing among the shadows. We often think of forest or blackwater habitats as being only sand and leaf litter, and roots and anything else is considered heresy by the biotope purists. Yet here was gravel, larger rocks, plants, and the occasional bit of construction debris, a brick, a rotting sleeper, a plastic bag. floated back into the centre of the stream, and examined the gravel scattered among the sand on the bottom. Small bursts of green signified the presence of hair grass, Heliocaris minima, stubbornly growing in the low light. Above the storm clouds closed in, and the stream became darker still. A small Leperinus octomacalatus caught my attention as it swayed against the current. The fallen logs and the husks of palms acted as dams, trapping floating debris, branches and leaves, creating ramparts of decaying matter. Caracidium AFF zebra darted across the sand around these organic structures. On a sandbank covered in rotting leaves, I spotted a group of female Epistogramma trifasciata. I followed them, and they led me to the male, head of the harem. I tried to move as little as possible, attempting to secure myself in place against the current with my elbows in the substrate, while hoping I didn't stir up too much sediment to make filming impossible. Just as I got myself into a good position, and the current carried away the suspended particles, the male flared and then dove into cover, only to emerge again, his colours subdued. I tracked him for a bit longer, but forced myself to stick to my code. Give the creatures space, never harry, never chase. As he slipped into the shadows again, I decided to back off and float downstream. I came across a patch of dark gravel. It was black, almost volcanic. Eventually I found Heliberto, lying still, watching the caracins which ebbed and flowed in the current around a great sunken log. They appeared to utilize the way that the water flowed up and over or underneath the raised part of the log as a sort of buffet, darting forward to snatch morsels drifting by. The light of my camera-mounted torch seemed to attract them as wherever I shone it, they surged forward, perhaps using it to better identify and snap up edible items in the flow. of the silver tetra Poptella paraguayensis sped past us in the half-light. I caught the very tail end of a group of Myloplus levis streaking by. Ricardo was floating about in a wider portion of the stream, and Heriberto and I struggled through a labyrinth of fallen and submerged branches to join him. 
Here we saw large garrisons, including Brycon Hilari and a Dorado, Salminis Brasiliensis, as they moved hurriedly through the murky water. We found a huge wooden sleeper, left over from the construction of the bridge, and which was slowly rotting apart. Peering into its cracks, we saw a jumble of species packed together in the hollow spaces, Hypostomus bulangeri, Platidorus armatulus, and Tracheleopterus galeatus. They seemed wedged, immovably crushed together. Between the three of us, using a plastic bag, a stick, and the light from my torch, we were able to probe out a Platidorus and one of the Tracheleopterus. As we worked around the great wooden structure, I felt as if I was one of three primordial beings, early primates, collaborating together, using sticks to probe and pry out prey from between crevices and hollows. Heriberto saw a juvenile peacock bass, an invasive, destructive predator. We reflected on the fate of the stream and its inhabitants, but we needed to go. There was another river to be explored.